and according to how much importance you feel that you're, what you're hearing is true and you want to buy it by it, that's how much of it you'll get. That's what he said. I didn't say this. He said it. <laughs> so, you got to put that in everyday life. Now, if you uh, hear the Bible talk and you hear uh, that God will save, how much importance do you put on that? Well, you put a lot of importance on it because you're here and you're saved. But there are lots of people out there that you share that with and they hear the same thing you heard but there's no importance to it. Yeah, yeah, but you know, before I get to before I die, I'm gonna make it right. Before before I, I go on up there uh, to that man in the sky, uh, then I'm I'm gonna I'll take care of things. Or you hear all kinds of things. Well what is, what they're saying is that I've got other important issues I need to listen to. Yeah. And so according to what your where your importance is, what you're listening to, what you feel that of that is important. That's what you're going to take with you. That's what you're going to get. Hallelujah. So he also goes on to say in verse 25, For to the one that has, the one will be given more. To him that has not, from him shall be taken even what he has. So that's a picture of deception. Look at that, I'll show you. The one who has, to him shall be given. So that's truth. He's walking in truth. He's put his importance in the right place. He's going to get more. Because it said here, according to how you measure it, that's how you're going to get it back. Yes. But, the one who has not, from him shall be taken even that which he had. Well, he, he didn't have anything, but this, he has not. Mm -hmm. But he thought, he must have thought he had something. He had something incorrect there. Mm -hmm. And so even what he thought he had, that incorrect possession, that he was holding on to, is even going to be taking the rug pulled out from an under him mm -hmm. at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay then. Mm -hmm. Well, why am I telling you this? Well, we're, we're checking what we believe. Mm -hmm. But what we believe comes from what we're hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I want to start this teaching with the fact that it's so important with which company you associate yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about a business company. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a people company. Mm -hmm. it, it's so very important to your spiritual, victorious walk on earth and your eternal security. Hallelujah. To identify with which company you associate with. Mm -hmm. It is not true that you can just go to any church and be okay. Right. Especially with the, what I'm seeing in some of them tonight. Yeah. It's getting worse. Mm -hmm. Look in 1 Corinthians 15. Okay. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15. In verse 33, says, the exhortation is, don't be deceived. That's right. Well, unfortunately, the deceived person is the last person to hear that. That's right. <laughs> because they're blinded. They don't see that they're wrong. They think they're right. Right. But even what they have is going to be taken from them mm -hmm. because they're wrong. That's what we read. Yes. So verse 33 says, the exhortation to us, don't be deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you're hearing evil, unbelief, doubt, anti-God, um, worldliness, mm -hmm. persuasion, temptation, if you're hearing those things, those are communications, and they'll corrupt the way you live. Mm -hmm. It's really very simple, isn't it? I mean, it, it, in theory it is. It's not so simple to walk out because 
The enemy is a, is a master of deception. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. You've been doing it a long time. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But I want you to see here, evil communications, evil sayings, so listening to evil communication will corrupt your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, in this case, what I'm speaking of this morning, because you are believers, you're Christians, I'm encouraging you that you have to, you have to, it's very valuable to be at the right church. And of course, we believe this is the right church for us. Amen. We're not prejudiced or anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 There are many good churches out there. We don't tell anybody where to go. We don't ever, ever uh, discourage somebody. They say, well, I've got to go here. We might be disappointed that they're leaving us. But if that's what God wants them to do, then God is their Lord, not us. I, I'm not here to control people. Uh, hopefully you learn that in the time that you've been with me. But I will tell you the truth, too. That's right. Hallelujah. But what he's saying here is that if you're going Sunday after Sunday and hearing unbelief taught, it will affect your life. That's right. And it comes in many forms. Because you've got to take heed what you're hearing. It's up to you. God will not knock you out of a church. Mm -hmm. Most times. He might be gently tugging at you. Mm -hmm. But because of tradition, and my daddy's always been there, my mama's always been there, and such and such, I can't leave. I believe in form to change. Well... God is interested in His church, but He's interested specifically in you. Yes, He is. And in this case, you've got to take care of you. So therefore, if there's some evil communication, even as strong as you may think you are, you're going to be corrupted by it because the Bible can't lie. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so you got you you got to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I'm alarmed by what I see Christians quote Christians following. It's alarming. It's alarming to me that half, I don't know, I don't know statistics, I shouldn't exaggerate. I apologize. It's alarming to me that the Christian community was divided in the last election. Now, I don't mean to step on any toes here, and I'm not trying to preach politics. But I am saying right is right and wrong is wrong. All right, come on back. That's right. And it doesn't have anything to do with color. That's right. It doesn't have anything to do with political party. Nope. It has to do with who is going to uphold the biblical standards. Right. You and I right. know we this country and we need to live by. Amen. Well, the sad thing about it is many of my friends Christian friends voted what I consider to be wrong because they were anti-godly principles. Mm -hmm. Abortion is anti-godly. Homosexuality is very anti-godly. There's no way around it. You can smooth it. You can reason it away. You can do whatever you want to. But the Word of God is the Word of God. And evil communications corrupt your lifestyle. And so it's alarming to me that the body of Christ is so immature spiritually that they cannot see right from wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's alarming. Yeah. It's another sign we're living in the final hour. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. Well, that's not the only thing I've seen. There was a, uh, a uh, supposed big revival in Lakeland not too long back. Uh -oh. I'm stepping on everybody's toes today. Come on, pal. Y'all gotta love me, though. And just because there was some miraculous event supposedly going on, everybody's flocking to it. Mm -hmm. The news media blew it way up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was supposed to be some big thing. And I'm sure people, in their innocency, got some blessings out of it. Because the Word of God was blessed. 